my introduction to the films of today. And as you know, we will continue next week just with Bumblebee. And you have a page about Bumblebee called Bumblebee 2018 Notes and Quotes, which now has been expanded to include brief sections about the other two films we will watch scenes from so that you have some links. And more importantly, in here you have some ideas for the analysis of Bumblebee, but I will review those notes together with you next Thursday. Keep in mind the ancestral idea. The ancestor to the structure of this film comes from the initial conception of the new technology and of modern technologies in general. Or I should say technologies of modernity, because even the train even the steamship is a modern technology, but there is no rapture involved. There is no science fiction side to it. Yes, in Back to the Future, they have a flying uh, steam locomotive, but that doesn't count, right? That's the exception. The idea of rapture is this idea that you have found in the three short stories by Charles Loomis. This idea that the technology of the automobile takes you, takes control of you. Psychologically, because you can resist the temptation to get it. And then physically, because when you're on it, and that's the ironic allegory in those three short stories, when you're on the automobile, you think you can control the technology, but the technology will do whatever they want with Rapture means that this new technology takes your nerves, your guts, your emotional side, and overwhelms it in such a way that you cannot be rational about the purchase, about the use of the new technology, right? It's something that changes your life. And I don't know if you realize your peculiar position, right? You go back two generations, right? There are two generations between you and me. I turned 60. I grew up without a TV until 1970, until I was uh, seven. Yes, I had a, an aunt uh, uh, who, who had a TV, so sometimes I watched some cartoons, Bugs Bunny, uh, but still, it's not just TV. There was no programming between lunchtime and 5 p.m. So I was sitting, waiting for the 5 p.m. news, followed by three cartoons of Bugs Bunny, Bugs Bunny or uh, other, uh, other characters, right? So you perhaps cannot even conceive of this idea of rapture because you are in a technological rapture, because your idea of what life is cannot go to the point of imagining what life can be without a telephone, without TV, etc., and all these other things. There is a second idea that you find early on in the marketing of the automobile and then many other pro products. That is typical, a typical ploy of consumerism in general. The idea that you're not buying something for the function it performs, for the need you have, but you're buying something, whether it be a new automobile or a pair of gloves or boots or a bag, because it'll change your life. It'll uh, in, enable you to afford a different kind of lifestyle, right? That is persistent within the commercials for automobiles during the last hundred years. You can find it even earlier, but not in a systematic way. That's always like that, right? Uh, so uh, the, the 
sale of the Volkswagen ID bus has to be done by showing this uh, minivan with uh, surfboard on it, with other things that suggest that you'll go places, you'll experience things that you would never experience without that. And think of how many commercials of big SUVs are built around this idea. So a consequence of this is the idea that there is you, but there is you plus the technology. And of course, that's the supersized version of you, or the complete version, because once you get into your mind through the suggestion of commercials and marketing campaigns that your life could be different, much better, then the current version of you becomes incomplete. Right? And that's why you, you suddenly feel the urge to complete your life with the purchase of an item that may be very expensive, uh, something that you can barely afford or you can afford through uh, 48 easy payments of $333. What happens within cinema about this? There are some examples, but mainly the reason we watch Herbie, the love bug, is that Herbie is profoundly based on that. It's not just an element, but Herbie is entirely based on the idea that you have a character who you can see before the car, before the meeting, the encounter with Herbie, and after the car. And of course, after the car is a different kind of character, a different kind of person, a more advanced, a more evolved person, right? So Herbie is fundamental in suggesting this idea that you can build a story where the car becomes the instrument of personal growth and something through which you change the way you interact socially. So your public persona is affected by it. It's not entirely disconnected from this idea of lifestyle, right? Because when they try to sell you a car through the idea of lifestyle, basically in, in different variations, the idea is, oh, you will be so much cooler with this car, right? That everyone will look at you. Everyone will want to be with you and experience the adventures that this new vehicle will afford you. So we are still talking about getting a car and the car being a transformative agent. From Herbie, in terms of the best, most innovative realization of this concept, we go to another film that we will watch later on, and uh, I hope you will still know about it. That would be Christine by John Carpenter, 1985 or so. Very nice horror movie. Yes? It actually just went back in theaters for a week, too. So if you want to go the to original? Like, yeah. I didn't know that. If you want to go to like AMC, it's like 10 minutes away from here. Here at Stony Brook? Mm -hmm. And this weekend, so this weekend too, or will it end on Thursday tonight? I think it's ending tomorrow. Okay. okay. <laughs> nice to know. I didn't know that. And as I said, uh, if you go into the archive of announcements, uh, they announced in 2021 that they were going to have a remake. They had actors, they had producers, but then I haven't heard anything about the remake of Christine. So Christine is the same thing. As you will see later on, it is the story of a nerd, of an awkward high school student, American high school student, who's being bullied, who is being ignored by girls in school, not popular at all, right? And then one day, almost randomly, the same way that in Herbie, Jim Douglas randomly gets to meet with Herbie, uh, Arnold, Arnie, in Christine, with his dear friend, 
drives by a very grisly house, and outside this house there is a wrecked, practically a wrecked Plymouth Fury from 1957, which is none other than the diabolical Christine. Buys the car, um, works on the car, and the more he works on the car, restoring the car, and the cooler he gets. He changes, but he changes in an evil way, little by little, because uh, Christine is some kind of evil spirit or a machine with an evil spirit inside of it. And so the more time Arnie spends with the car, and the more different his public persona becomes. Very cool, he gets the most popular girl in school, uh, becomes very confident, very powerful, and then of course things go down because it's a horror movie, so you cannot have a happy ending. And by the end, the card seizes control of Arnie's soul. So from Christie, we get to the Transformers. The Transformers series, where not much we find that is new, with the only exception of the fact that Bumblebee is really, a, in, in some ways, a great remake of Herbie, without going through the same story, but uh, focusing the narrative on the transformation that happens through the interaction with the technology. It's also a great movie, Bumblebee, because it's done mostly visually. They don't need to explain things to you. They don't need to have dialogues to have you understand how the story goes, what the characters feel. You see that through the visuals, and that's how cinema should be. And nowadays, even big budget movies tend to have too much explanations, too, too many explanations, right? Uh, they feel they need to do that instead of just showing what's going on, what's happening. So, the first film for us today will be the most recent, because I think it makes sense, Rise of the Beasts. Let me just set it up. Calling all auto parts. Calling all auto parts. They did by you. Hi, this is Dollar Steve. I have a vision. So we're just like writing. You can write one line reactions, a few comments. Don't make it a comprehensive list of observations because otherwise the whole experience is spoiled. Mm. So you can wait until the segment is over and then write down something. Or if you feel like there isn't enough time, you can take it home and just write inside your Google Docs file your reactions. That would be fine with me. You just specify in-class activity from 914 about the Transformers movie. Okay. So try to find the balance between providing some insightful, interesting commentary and still enjoying and appreciating the film. Yes, Carmela? Um, I think you get one more sheet. Yeah. There should be more, right? I printed 39. So, yeah, here they are. Anyone else need one? Okay. So, what is the element of continuity? From the initial idea of the car to Herbie and Christine that we find in the 2023 film. It's still the idea that the character's life is dramatically different in a bad way before the character gets into contact with the technology. In this case, it is not just an automobile, but an Autobot, right? The premise to this series of movies, which clearly are based on toys produced by Hasbro. Anyone here played with Transformers as a kid or not as a kid? Okay, yeah. 
my, my son also had some nice transformers. So uh, the premise is that on a faraway planet, there are two groups, two tribes of transformers or Autobots. The evil Decepticons, led by Megatron initially, and the good guys who are the Transformers, led by Optimus Prime. They uh, fight with each other, and they usually fight in these movies about some piece of technology that would allow one of the groups to prevail on the others. So, for example, in here, the key element that would allow one group to dominate over the other is a transwarp key uh, that uh, allows uh, the group of Autobots, of Transformers, that has that technology to travel quickly through space. Okay? from one part of the universe to the other. <clears throat> was this Transformers also directed by Michael Bay or not? No, in this case, it wasn't Michael Bay. Uh, and Bumblebee, neither. Uh, Bumblebee was Travis Knight, but Michael Bay here is just a producer, together with Spielberg. But it's a very commercial vehicle, very commercial product. It's more like a film about superheroes and guys who get in contact with the superheroes and become one of them, the protagonist Noah, Noah Diaz, then it is about cars and interacting with cars, uh, etc. So it's, it's rather conventional. And in fact, it shows that they called it the um, Rise of the Beasts because instead of having just vehicle transforming into robots, they had a number of animals, uh, a couple of gorillas, uh, uh, some kind of bird of prey um, and, and other there's scorpion or something that looks like a scorpion there are other animals that look like dogs they're all mechanical uh, but, and, and they can all transform but it's not just vehicles I don't know if they did it because of the idea of expanding the merchandise in uh, I, I don't know it's not innovative but not because in this case they're repeating the previous Transformers, this is the sixth one, I believe, the sixth or the seventh, but simply because they've copied from other big budget movies with superhero-like characters. So in this film, you have your two protagonists, Elena, who is working at a museum. Uh, she has bright mind but she is low-level staff because she's not appreciated. And Noah Diaz, who we'll see here, is uh, repairing technology, has been uh, served as a soldier, is looking for a job because he has a brother, a younger brother, who suffers from cycle cell, sickle cell anemia, and they don't have insurance. So right now, at the beginning of the film, uh, the brother is suffering from symptoms of his disease, but they cannot pay for treatment and is not critical enough to get cured, to, to receive treatment from the emergency room. And so first, Noah tried to find the money legally by applying for a job. He doesn't even get an interview for this job because they tell him that his officer, when he was serving, said that he wasn't a team member. Then he tries the legal way by going into the museum where Elena works to steal a car. This car looks like a Porsche, but is in fact a transformer called Mirage. So a transformer, a vehicle, that can transform into a robot and also has a personality, an identity, and a name. <clears throat> Something we will see uh, eminently displayed in Bumblebee. Of course, as soon as uh, Noah gets into the vehicle, he realizes that this is not an ordinary vehicle. 
And from that point on, of course, he'll, his life will change, his personality will change. By the end of the film, it, he is not only more confident, stronger, but his contribution to saving the world from the Decepticons is acknowledged by a, a secret uh, agency of the government, and they give him free health care forever which gives you a good idea of healthcare system in the United States. You can actually have free healthcare as long as you save the world. It's not that difficult, right? So either you're born in Europe or you save the world and you get free healthcare. I think the American way is best because that way you have to grow. You have to get it, right? It's not give it to me. Uh, no, you have to, to get things. You have to do something to get things. Okay. So you find the same pattern, right? Before the technology, during the contact with the technology transformation, and then afterwards, the new you. Okay? We will just see the initial part and move on to the next film. And as I said, by the end of the film, he will transform. Now, we go back in time to the initial Transformer film, directed by Michael Bay this time, Shia LeBouf and Megan Fox. Is it something we can repeat, or? Is it, no, I was just surprised that this movie was Oscar nominated. Why not? <laughs> I mean, the and effects, the Oscars, I think, were good, at least for the time period, but yeah. everything else is sort of yeah. I'm surprised Bumblebee was not included. I think there's a bit more... Okay, so, once again, we find a character who's weak, lacks leadership, lacks charisma, lacks social skills at the beginning of the film, before the meeting with the technology, and then through the interaction with the technology, which in this case is a Transformer who initially comes out as a 19, a Camaro from the 1970s, 1976, I think, and then transforms into 2007 Camaro, which is uglier, simply for marketing reasons. We will watch the initial setup that conveys the idea of how weak and unsuccessful the character is before meeting with the technology, and if there is time, we'll get to the point where he starts getting the girl, Megan Fox, through the car. So we find...